Hi guys, I have a couple sets of these remote controlled sockets. These come with this small remote controller with on and off buttons for four different channels. These are ones that plug into your wall and you can plug some devices in here. I've already taken this one apart, let's have a look inside. Input and output have one of the pins connected together and only one wire from there going to the PCB. And on the other pin, the input and output are separated, there are two wires going to the PCB. They will be connected together by the relay when the switch has been turned on. On this side of the PCB there is also this some kind of RF receiver module, a switch for selecting the channel, there is a fuse and under it there is 78L05 5V regulator. And on the back side of the PCB there are some diodes, resistors, couple of capacitors and this decoder IC. I will talk more about that decoder IC in a moment, but let's first look at the schematic that I drew for this device. At least I think it is quite a simple device. The circuit is easy to understand and to modify if wanted. But it is mains powered and I don't recommend anyone making any modifications to mains powered devices. The power supply part is very common and basic capacitive power supply. And that means the output isn't isolated from the mains. That is very important to keep in mind. This Zener diode configuration is a little bit different than usually. But that is most likely because it's not used for precise voltage regulation as there's this 5 volt regulator after that in the circuit. If you watch BigLive.com's videos you must have seen something very similar in his videos. And here's the RF receiver. It is this green PCB module over here. It has that spring antenna, IC, bandpass filter, something like that. And it gets power through a diode and capacitor that is to buffer the voltage even if the main 5 volt line drops. This will prevent it dropping as fast. The module only has three pins and the third pin is data pin which is demodulated output signal from this RF receiver. And that signal goes to the input of HS2273 which has one output pin that goes through a resistor and LED to the base of the transistor which will turn on the relay. This decoder gets the power from main 5 volt line, no diodes here. Let's next have a look at the data that gets sent from the RF receiver to the decoder. This information is from the datasheet of the decoder, so there are 8 address bits, 4 data bits which select the state of the output pins, and then there's one synchronization bit. Switch that selects one of four different channels will change the state of the address bits on this decoder. Few of the address lines have been hardwired and manufacturers should have connected them differently on each set, but actually they didn't do that. Here's something about the protocol of the data that goes from the receiver to the decoder and also in the remote side from encoder to the transmitter. So bit 0 is short high, long low, short high, long low. Bit 1 is long high, short low, long high, short low. And there's also third state of the pin floating and that is short high long low, long high, short low. The ratio between short to long is 1 to 3. And the board rate is quite slow, so this should be quite easy to read and write with even simple microcontrollers. The possible modifications should be quite easy to make. There's the 5 volt line easily available. Replicating the data going in this line is easy, so is reading it. Changing the address bit of the decoder is easy, just lifting or changing the state of the pins. And the radio could be changed if one prefers another frequency for example. So quite hackable device. But the dangers of mains power should be taken into consideration before modifying these kind of devices. There are the like and subscribe buttons maybe below this video, you know what to do with them. Thanks, bye.